Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting game of Columbia Eagles football here on KCHS. Welcome into the Aces Wild pregame show. My name is Alex Schlemmer. I'll be doing your commentating tonight. And we got another good one here tonight. We got Freeburg and Columbia. We got the Midgets and the Eagles in a game that's always exciting. It's always fun. And you know what's going to come down to the end. Last week we had one come down to the end. So hopefully uh, this week we have another good outcome. We've got Blue Jay night. We got the junior cheerleaders coming out. They'll be doing their performance here in about 10 minutes or so. So we might try to get them on a little bit. They're getting lined up and ready to go. And all their parents, grandparents are making their way. So hopefully we have an exciting turnout for them. Uh, then the Blue Jays, they get to lead the way out for the Eagles here tonight, and they'll be coming through the tunnel and something that they're going to get to do in a couple of years, and a lot of those kids that we have now as seniors got to do that as well. Like I said, another big Cahokia Conference matchup here. We've got the Eagles, the Midgets, both coming in 3-1. and one. Uh, Freeburg last week got beat by Central 31-19, so they're coming in with a loss. Columbia coming in after that exciting win over the Shells, 28-27 on that 67-yard punt return by Dom Vegley. So hopefully tonight we're going to have that exciting game, and we'll see what Coach Horner as he comes in and joins us now. And Coach, welcome into the show, the Aces Wild pregame show. Last week you said you guys came out a little slow, a little flat. What's the message of the boys this week at pregame meal that was sponsored by uh, Reef Schneiders? So thank you, Reef Schneiders. Don't come out flat. It's pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, message. pretty simple message. No, I mean, it, it's just one of those things that uh, you know, I told them there's a right way to do things, there's a wrong way to do things. And uh, the right way is uh, to get your mind right before the game and uh, get your mind focused on, on, on the task at hand and give me, uh, you know, three hours of your time uh, and be focused and, and uh, we're, you know, let the chips fall where they fall. But if you're focused and you play hard and things don't work out, it's a lot easier to take than if, you, uh, if you're not prepared. It's a pretty easy message. Three hours of your time, you got the rest of the night to go out and do what you want. And you come off a game like last week, that big exciting game. What's your most exciting memory that you've had with Freeburg in your 22 years here at Columbia? Oh, wow. I mean, uh, it goes way back. I think one of them goes way back to, uh, well, it might have been the 2003 year. Uh, and it was a big moment only because we hadn't beaten Freeburg in many, many, many years. And we beat them uh, down at their place pretty handily, had uh, three rushers. Uh, that all ran for 100 yards that night, and Nick Schlimmer, Nate House, and Andy May, and uh, that kind of started things for us. But then, uh, obviously, I think the, uh, the other two times, 2008, we beat them uh, here in a big game, uh, really put it on them. And then, uh, again, you know, um, probably, uh, what was that, 2018, uh, Nick and Sam's junior year, uh, playing them in the playoffs here after uh, an exciting game during the regular season. So there's a lot of them, but none of them really probably overshadows the other, but it's always a great game when we play them. Always is a good game. So tonight, what's your game plan going in other than scoring more points than the opposing team and controlling the line of scrimmage? Yeah. What else are you going to do? Block and tackle. <laughs> you got to block You got to block better than them. You got to tackle more than them. But no, games like this uh, really come down to the team that's going to limit their mistakes and the team that's going to not turn the football over. Uh, we've we've got to be able to play solid defense. We've got to make sure we don't give up big play, too. You know, they've got a big play player in their quarterback, uh, the Stewart kid. He, I mean, he's, he's good. And, 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 you know, they move him out at receiver sometimes, too. So we've got to eliminate big plays. Um, and then obviously we just have to establish something offensively that um, uh, to where it looks like that we are in control of the game rather than just uh, reaching a hat hoping that we can have a big play somewhere. You mentioned that last night on the Holt Meets Coach's Corner. So hopefully tonight you got the chips falling where they need to fall and hopefully the Eagles come out 2-0 and in the conference and 4-1 uh, and one after tonight's game. So good luck tonight, thank Coach. You. Thank you. And uh, let's have a victory. All right, thank you. We're going to head to a break real quick. We'll have Jared Germain join us here at Columbia, and we'll bring you the rest of the Aces Wild pregame show after this.
Welcome into the perch here on the Aces Wild pregame show. We got the perch where all the Eagles parents will be hanging out and tailgating with the Columbia Quarterback Club. Uh, homecoming coming up the 50th year. So October 7th game against the Salem Wildcats will be that homecoming game. So come on down to the Columbia Quarterback Club's tailgate. There's going to be some hors d'oeuvres, some soft drinks, water, whatever you would like to have. The uh, Quarterback Club's going to sponsor that down here at the perch with all of our sponsors and parents. Jared, welcome in this week. Another conference game here. Let's talk a little bit about last week. Absolutely uh, highlighted by that punt return, but that was a team win from the new guys coming in to the last guy in the last play. And it was probably one of the best uh, games that we've announced, I'd say. I mean, we had a lot of fun doing that game. Um, it was kind of back and forth. It felt like whoever had the ball last was going to win, and luckily we did. So. That worked out well. You know, you, you look at somebody like Cameron Janik, we talked about him on our walk over here. That's somebody hadn't seen the running back position this year, and he had himself a heck of a night. Yeah, he got, I think, we have it here, about 16 carries last week. So um, got him going early, um, getting him some touches. He runs really hard, and then it's nice whenever you have guys like Brennan Wyke, um, Wetzel, too, that you can distribute the ball out to and give number 12 a break. Now you flip it over to the defensive side of the game. Mason Schnabel led the way. I think he had 12 tackles, something like that. A name that we've said a couple times, but maybe not all the time. And last week, he was there at every possible second. And sometimes it was just they run into him, and he did the right thing and held on. Yeah, and what we talked about all year is having depth at that O-line and D-line position, um, knowing that Coach Baker is very – very happy about having this group, um, having to put three to four different guys in the mix. And then if those guys get tired, you can put the whole group, new group in. So it's nice to have that depth. And now we talk, you know, we talked to Coach Horner just a second ago on the Aces Wild pregame show. And he talked about, you know, you started a little slow. Hopefully we don't have that again this week. We had those turnovers early in the game. And we said, you know, that's not something that we're used to seeing, not used to doing. It happened. We overcame it. And then that led us to the 67-yard punt return and something that you were uh, you were jumping all over me. You had two great calls last week, I'm going to say. When uh, Mason came in at wide receiver, you were instantly over in the corner of my eye. I see you doing this. You're calling for the pass, and then you're jumping all over my shoulders during that uh, that TD run. So it's a lot of fun, like you said, and hopefully tonight we come into the Freebird game. Hopefully we have a lot of fun with that too. And something I can go back on uh, Coach Horner saying is eliminating big plays. I feel like our defense, we always hunker down on first and second down, but on third down is when we really need to really hunker down and um, force them to punt the ball away. Um, I think third downs are going to be a big thing for the Eagles defense tonight. Third downs and field position, too. I feel like we haven't talked much about that, but that's a huge factor on these big games. So we talk about this Freeberg team, quarterback that has been compared to Tua Tagovailoa. I think that's how you say his name. So, uh, and it, he's been compared, you know, you got two quarterbacks that are the same. They can throw the ball, they can run the ball, they can catch the ball, they can do it all. So you look at this Freeberg team, three and one, they're coming off the loss to the Central Cougars. Uh, but last year they beat us. So they got a little bit of the upper hand, you know, they've got the upper hand from last year's win that they have. And they got a little bit of redemption on their mind from last week, taking that first conference loss. So what else do you see out of this Freeberg Midget team? Um, I think over the past, to me, I think over the past, I'd say eight to nine years, this has become one of the biggest rivalries uh, that, that we face. So um, I think when, whenever you know you're playing Freeburg, you know it's a big game, you're both 2-0 and in conference play, uh, you got to come in and play pretty good. And playing pretty good might not be good enough sometimes. You know, you gotta, you got to have yourself a heck of a game. What's your favorite? I asked Coach Horner, what's your favorite Freeburg memory? Um, I'm going to go. I'll start with mine. I'll let you think of it. You know, we went in and Coach Horner said, I don't care if we win this game two to nothing. As long as we get a win, we won the game seven to six on a close game that Coach Horner came to me and he goes, Slim, what do I call? And I said, I'm not really sure. Nothing's working right now. But luckily, Charles Ferris was able to get one into the end zone. And Derek Hornbossel missed the first tackle on the kickoff at the 20-yard line and then made the tackle at the opposite 20-yard line. So that uh, that's my favorite memory. What's yours? Um, I'm going to go whenever we were announcing, whenever Sam and Nick were seniors and we played Freeburg in the playoffs and they had that Brennan Main kid at home. Um, Sam Horner, I remember, had a really big, I think he had two picks that game. And I just remember him looking over the Freeburg sideline and their fans one time and just told them to be quiet. So I, that, that's the one memory that, that definitely strikes my mind. And you got to have that in those rivalry games. You got to be able to, hey, be quiet a little bit. You got to have that flair. And I think we're going to have a lot of that here tonight. Whenever the Eagles and the Midgets strap them up and get going. So we're going to head up to the booth. We'll be, bring you the rest of the Aces Wild pregame show right after this.
Welcome back into the Aces Wild pregame show presented by Aces Wild Video Game and Parlor. Just two minutes away from the opening kick where the Eagles won the coin toss, deferred to the second half, and the Freeburg Midgets will be receiving. We're going to bring you the national anthem here in a second. And Jared, you watch that right there. Uh, the junior, junior cheerleaders, they performed earlier tonight. 184 uh, students came to their camp last week. That was the record for them. And you look at the Blue Jay numbers, there was a whole train of them coming through. Yeah, and I know that feels that's a great feeling for those kids running through that tunnel and all those fans cheering for you. It's a definitely a great feeling for all of them. And you look at the players too, you look at the Blue Jays, what they do for the the Columbia High School team, the organization, you know, it's a feeder program if you will, you know. There's a bunch of guys that get started at that underclass level and they work their way up. So uh, good job to the volunteers at the Blue Jay level for getting those numbers up. And you look, they have a couple different teams. I don't know what it was like whenever you played. Did you guys have a couple teams at every age group? Uh, yeah, I remember I think it was my seventh or eighth grade, no, probably sixth or seventh grade year. Um, we had two different teams in the same grade. Like, so we had like two vars two like junior varsity teams and we ended up playing each other in the championship game because <laughs> they had to split us up. And I mean, we both got to the championship, so that was pretty cool. Well, good deal. Now we're under a minute here. The band's starting to get set up. So, Jared, we'll flip over to tonight's game here. What are your three keys going into the game, and what are you looking forward to tonight? Um, I think big plays, lim limit those big plays like Coach Horner said in the pregame show. Um, I think anytime your defense can, can hunker down, like I said earlier, um, it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, it gives your offense a lot more things they can do. Um, I also want to see a little bit more uh, other guys other than Don, number 12, Don Vagley, uh, see Wetzel or Wyke, um, guys like Janik that we saw last week, see him get in the end zone a couple times. Um, and then just you got another home game, and it's a conference game, and it's also one of the biggest games of the year. Freeburg um, has turned into a major rivalry with us, so um, big game here tonight. I'd like to see the Eagles get out to a fast start. We haven't really seen that too much, um, especially last week for sure. Waterloo game was a little bit slow as well, so uh, – we're going to send this over now to the band as the color guard makes our way out onto the field. We'll bring you the national anthem right now. The colors are presented by Columbia High School's very own Air Force Junior ROTC. The color guard is commanded by Cadet Sergeant Carson Cowflash. Other members of the color guard include Cadet Airman Hunter Corbis, Cadet Airman Olivia Kerr, Cadet Airman Dylan Siebert, and Cadet Airman Jacob Coons. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem.
It's Eagle football time, Jared. It's Eagle football time. I don't think we've said that all year. <laughs> Columbia tonight going to be coming out. Blue tops, blue pants, and the white hats. Freeburg going to have silver helmets, white tops, and the blue bottom is going to be a little bit easier this week. Seeing the numbers last week, we had the yellow on the white. Made it a little tough to see, but tonight we'll be able to see the visiting team real well. The Freeburg Midgets are led by captains. Number 11, Noah Peterman, who's going to be a wide receiver tonight. You'll be hearing his name quiet off. And number 24, Lucas Pajak, a defensive uh, guy that we'll be saying a lot with the tackles. I believe he is their leading tackler. Caleb Loftus, a little bit of everything, offensive and defensive. And Trent Little, the big number 60, six foot. 250 linemen and Jared who do you got for your captains for the Eagles uh, I think we saw Don Vagley out there number 12 uh, Brennan Wyke number 23 Tom Kaningstein number 73 and we had Carter Hicks number two and I did believe we won the toss elected to defer so that means Freeburg will get the ball first to start this game off shouldn't take anything for the coaches tonight if you can't get pumped up as a player on a game like tonight you're in the wrong sporter Maybe you shouldn't be in sports, but tonight's going to be a good one. We'd like to thank Reef Schneiders for donating the pregame meal tonight. Uh, they had some grilled chicken, I think, green Ooh. beans. They had, they had a full meal tonight. So thank you to Reef Schneiders for donating that meal. And if anybody else would like to donate a meal, uh, get a hold of the Columbia School District, and they will send you to the Meal Moms, and they will get you squared away. That's enough of the Aces Wild pregame show. Dom Vegley kicks us off as it goes from left to right. It will be recovered from the four. Freeburg's going to go reverse. around, fake the reverse. Columbia does not buy that it whatsoever. A couple guys run past the return man, and they're going to get it back to the 20-yard line. The return man there, number 43, Tucker Murphy. We'll be saying his name a lot tonight, too. Here comes this Columbia Eagles defense. Last week, uh... I think we only had a couple miscues on the defensive side of the ball. I know um, getting getting down to those third downs. I know in week one uh, that was our that was our biggest thing. We would get to those third and fourth downs, and then we just let up those big plays. So that's something we got to eliminate tonight. Like I said earlier, two defensive guys that will not be on the field tonight on, at all. Uh, Brandon Jackson, he was one of the leading tacklers with ten total tackles, and then Sam Dunny made his return last week, but then went out with a knee injury. Freeburg are going to be in a spread. They're going to hand the ball off right away to the running back. He's going to bend it to the left side. He's going to make one man miss in Hicks, a second man miss in Wetzel. Hicks is able to recover and come out and help make the tackle with number 54 for the Eagles. I believe that is Nick Janik. Or, no, I'm sorry, Logan Hicks. And on the defensive side, I want to see Carter Hicks and Brennan White have some big games tonight. They're both playing that outside linebacker position. And Freeburg is known to run a lot of flow stuff, keep the keep the ball with the quarterback. Um, so we'll have to see Carter Hicks and Brennan White setting that edge and forcing everything back inside. Um, so expect a big game from them, hopefully. Going to be doubles into the boundary, sniffer back to the left side into the boundary as well. He's going to motion to the right side with the running back. Second down and three. They're going to flow to the right side with the quarterback, number one. Stewart, we talked about him. He's getting all the way to the outside. Great job by the Eagles defense forcing them out and a loss on the play. And they're probably going to run a lot of the same stuff that we run. Um, since it, what I've heard, their quarterback can run a little bit. So um, it's kind of good for us because we know, we know our offense and we know that we like to give the ball to number 12 a little bit. So we'll see if uh, we can hunker down on that defensive side, stop this quarterback, not let him have a big night. Quarterback Cole Stewart coming in, 239 yards rushing on the season. Loss of four on the play, third down and seven. Looks like we're going to have a blitz out of our linebacker. Eagles got three men down, and there's going to be a second man blitzing. They're going to have to run to the right side. It's going to be a first down, it looks like. I'm going to make one missed tackle and slips, but tackled there after the first down is Mason Vagley. Just enough of a rain today to make it wet and a little bit annoying. Hey, it's, it's football weather. I'll, I'll take it over what we've had the first three weeks. So. So that's good for a Freeburg midget first down, gain of 10 on the play, ball at the 32-yard line now. Freeburg looking over to their coaching staff. Looks like they just verbally call the plays in. Taking their time getting the ball out, or the call out, under 10 seconds now on the play clock. Doubles to the right side, the wide side of the field. 
Motion man here comes to the quarterback. They're going to hand it off to him into the boundary. He's got a couple blockers, lowers the boom, and makes the tackle. Number 27 there for the midgets with the tackle, or with the carry, rather, Caleb Loftus. And that looked like 54. I think that's Hicks. Hicks. He had to change numbers, I think, already this year. And with no Brandon Jackson, we're asking him to step in that place for him. Um, you got him and Cam Janik in there in, the, in those middle linebackers. Um, so we'll have to see some some big big plays from them tonight on the run. Linemen for Freeburg once again coming out big. They always have some meaty bones up there. Going to be a counter this time coming right at us again. He's going to get through the hole. He's going to get a first down, and he's going to be tackled by Wetzel, I believe it is, or vaguely. Couldn't see who came up last. Once again, though, that's number 43, that's Tucker Murphy. Number 13, Peyton Andrews with the tackle. Murphy on the year, 28 carries for 205 yards. It's an average of seven yards per carry and four touchdowns. Another first down here for the Midgets. Looks like we're going to send a man on a blitz. I believe that's Hicks. Freeburg slow and methodic here. Timeout. Didn't like what he saw. Nothing really, nothing really going on that drive to be calling a timeout, but he didn't like something there. Yeah, well, they have the wide side of the field over there to the right. Um, and we had Carter Hicks on this right side along with, I think it was um, his brother, Logan Hicks, right behind him kind of stacking up. So if they would have used that wide side of the field, I think they could have got some yardage out of it. But coach on the Freeburg side didn't like what he saw and burned a timeout early. One thing that I like, and I wish I would have been around for it, you look at Coach Amsden there, he's always got that iPad in his hand all night long. And he was up there with Schnabel showing him something. They get replays in real time oh, yeah. just that quick. So you always look at Coach Amsden. He's got the headset on. He's talking to everybody. But he's got that iPad there, and he's ready to have a replay. Oh, yeah, he's the, first, he's the first one to tell you what you did wrong right, right <laughs> when you come to the sideline. And nothing better than having a guy like that. So doubles into the boundary with a sniffer back into the boundary. Going to be a run right up the middle this time. Murphy's going to get it, and it's just an ISO, and he's blown up by three or four Eagles. Looks like Logan Hicks was there to lead the way. Dom Vaguely. And it was ultimately Mason that came in there at the end as well. Great job by all of the defensive players coming up and a gain of three. And like I said earlier, with Brandon Jackson being out, um, he started last year almost all year um, and knowing the system really well and stopping our run game. So these two linebackers are going to have a long night if it's going to be like this. Rolling out this time is the quarterback, Stewart. He's going to find a man. He's going to dump it over, and it's going to be oh boy, tipped Wyke. by Brennan Wyke. He was floating through the air there. The first attempt of pass on a tough pass there, too, for Stewart. He's having to roll and throw against his body. And that's going to bring up a third and seven. And, Jared, this was one of your keys tonight. Yeah, you got what you wanted. You got third and seven, almost third and eight. Um, and, you, and you know they're probably going to run a little play action, try to get their quarterback some room to either throw the ball downfield or get it with his feet like we do with Vagley. But, um, yeah, this is, this is what you want. You look there as Schnabel and Hicks were switching around there. It looked like. Hicks is going to go to the strong side of the field. They motion the men into the boundary this time. Going to be a handoff up the middle once again, Runner just right ISO. It's going he to be good for short. six, maybe a first down, might be a yard short. Get the index card out. That was Tucker Murphy just running straight downhill and uh, down. lowering his shoulder. Murphy coming in 5'8", 155. Not a big guy, but he runs pretty hard. Look at Cole Stewart, same way, 5'10", 165. And then you look at number 14. He's been their uh, sniffer back, J.J. Weiss, 6'3", 215. Yeah, that's something we needed last week early off in the game. We need this crowd to get loud. It's fourth down. They got loud for a second. Going to be oh, a bad snap. Oh, it's going to be yes. Wildcat, and it's yes. going to be His fumbled. Down. It's going to be picked yes, up, sir. and they're going to call him down. It's going to be a turnover on downs for the Eagles. It just looked like a whack, wacky snap there. And I don't know. It was the running back in the Wildcat position, so I think he was just going to get that ball and try to get that one yard, but it all starts with the snap. 
you do those kind of plays so you don't mess up the handoff. <laughs> yeah. you know? Can't have a handoff without a snap. So, I'll the Eagles that. will come out now with their offense that didn't have a great night last week but did just enough to get the victory, and they're going to be led by senior quarterback Dom Vagley, who's going to have trips to his left side. Four down linemen for the midgets. Going to be a pass to the outside. they got two guys running arrows, and both of them, now as you look at Wyke, Looking over, I don't know if uh, he should have been a Janik little flatter been, or somebody yeah. needed to be deeper because, yeah, they, they ran almost the same exact route at the same yardage. And you had one guy guarding that corner was guarding two people out there in the flat. So, def so definitely a, uh, a miscue on that first down play. Doubles this time for the Eagles. Four down linemen, two linebackers for the midgets. Going to be a quick now route. Vaguely was wanting to slap, and we ran a hitch. So... Two quick routes there with nothing going. Come out slinging it, huh, Coach Horner? So six seconds, I think, taken off on this drive for the Eagles. And this is where we usually see his uh, famous rollout to the left side of the field. Trips to the left side, going to send a man in motion. It might even be a legal procedure because he was going forwards. Vaguely fakes the throw. And he has a man open in Wyke, but it goes through his hands in a quick, maybe 10-second drive there yeah, for the that. Eagles. Vaguely was looking deep. He had his check down man wide open in Wyke, but it falls incomplete through his hands. Hudson Bryant right there. He was your uh, motion man. Motion, but he was almost moving forward. That's why I was saying maybe yeah. illegal, illegal procedure. And moving that motion out to this side, you're thinking maybe you can pull a safety or a linebacker to follow that running back to this side, and then you're going to throw it to your left. Um, but vaguely couldn't really find anyone open in the first two, three seconds of his drop back. So try to get it out to Wyke. Fourth down. Great punt by vaguely. It's going to be fair caught, waved, and caught. At the Freeburg 17, we're going to stick here with it. like to thank our sponsors. Once again, Reef Schneider's donating the meal tonight. Uh, we'd like to thank the new signs. Have you seen the new signs that are out there this year? They were all donated as well. So um, we used to just have those little two-by-two -two signs. They've got some pretty fancy one out there that are all brand new and looking good. So that Freeburg midget offense was able to start a little bit of something, but Eagles hung tough on that fourth down, four stay turnover on down. So let's see if we can do it again. Freeburg 701 on the play clock, or on the game clock rather, starting from the 17. Motion man, going to be another high snap brought down, handed off up the middle as the Freeburg running back. He's going to get to the 25, and that's Murphy once again. And right now the Eagles don't have an answer for up the middle. Yeah, and they're. I think they're going to keep running at number two, Carter Hicks. Um, they, they've been doing that first first drive, and they had some positive yardage, and looks like they're going to go right back at it. And they like what they see, putting uh, their 60, I think that he was one of their, yep, one of their captains, um, putting him, Carter Hicks right across from him, and I think Freeburg's liking what, liking what they see on that play. Doubles to the wide side of the field. They almost take themselves out of the play as high as they are. High snap, once again, it's fumbled, and it's going to be caught and just dropped right away down is the quarterback, Stewart. Schnabel there to get the tackle, I guess. We'll give it to him. And that's going to be another third down and six. <sighs> we'll take that, man. And that's already two bad snaps for Freeburg on two drives. And it goes through the quarterback's hands, too. So they're, yeah. they're high snaps, and it goes through his hands. So double disastrous there. Jared, I have papers everywhere right now. I'm trying to figure out where I want them. Doubles into the boundaries. Going to be another slow snap. It's going to be the quarterback there, running to the outside. Eagles force it back in the inside. Going to be close to the first down. This official is saying he's short, and they are going to say he's short. Stewart, two yards short. Good job by the Eagles and Maddox Steffen. You going for it, Alex? Making the tackle. I am punting. Yeah, especially I don't those, think you can. I mean, yeah, you can't. Especially the two bad snaps we've seen tonight. All you need is, but give you, the give us the ball on the twenty-five yard line. But you have a running or a quarterback that can do just about anything. So yeah, if he sees an opening, he might take it. And it is going to be just a quick punt. I like that out of Freeburg. There, you make it look like you're going to run a play. 
but your quarterback's only five yards deep, and he's able to get the punt off. So he punted it from about the 25. Quick change of possessions going on right now. Good for 36 yards, and that drive only lasted two minutes. Quick possessions right now going in the ball game. Both teams kind of just getting a feel for each other, see what each offensive and defensive line is like. Um, coaches seeing where people are going to be lined up over certain players. So we'll see if we can get something going here on this second drive. I'm going to call this a king set here, I there believe is what we used to call it. Brennan Wyke, your running back with Hudson Bryant. They're going to run it to the outside with Vagley. He's got the that's two blockers. Like He's got close to a first down, and that's just a good get yourself moving. Bring up a second down and two, and you like seeing that out of your two lead and running backs. Yeah, and I mean, when you have Don Vagley coming at you with two or three guys on, in front of him, uh, it's going to take somebody to, I, I'd say at least two or three guys to get to Don Vagley because he runs so hard. Um, but great job there running into the boundary and picking up the first down and see if we can keep this drive going. Cameron Janik in as the pistol back running back. He's just going to get the handoff. He's going up the middle. He just ran right by his lead blocker. And he looked like, I believe that was Kish that was the lead blocker. He was yelling, but you know what, bud? You got to get yourself going. <laughs> he can't wait for you. You got to get moving. Gain of one. Lucas Pajak on the tackle for Freebird. Pajak, we said... His name would be mentioned a lot, and it is. He gets the tackle. Looks like a cover two look for Freeberg here. Trips to the right side, running back to the right. Vagley's going to roll to the right. Good pick up there, there by the running back, Bryant. Wetzel makes the catch, first gets down. to the 40, and it's going to be another first down for the Eagles. Great <laughs> job by Hudson Bryant making that block on the uh, blitzing midget. That other ref on the other side wasn't going to give him that first. He had about two yards short till he saw this ref on this side walk up to the 40. Number 90 for Freeburg, Keenan Marsh, 6'5", 230. Just got blocked by the 5'9", 155, Hudson Bryant. Good job, Hudson. Going to be a quick route to Brennan go. Wyke. He's got five yards. Good blocking downfield by Wyke. Wyke. The official from halfway across the field is going to throw a flag, though. That's a tough call. They're going to call a block in the back, or most likely if, if he sees from that far away. Cause that, that's almost not even his call. But he must have seen, seen something he didn't like. Threw the laundry on the field. Holding is the call, or blocking the back, I guess, is the call, and it's going to be a replay of the down. Is that a 10-yard? That's a spot foul. So it's going to be a loss of 10, so that's going to make it first down and 12. Janik and Hicks come onto the field for the Eagles. So they only got, looks like one... Is this number three on this side? Is he playing corner? Is, I guess he's playing the first threat to him because they only have one free safety out there. So if you put two guys out here and you run two goes down the middle of the field. Got to adjust the clock. They let it run there after the play. Coach Stump comes over, puts some more time on the clock. So we're going to go king set once again to the wide side of the field. It's going to be handed off. Good job there getting up the middle, but – just to be found by a bunch of Freeburg midgets there. Nothing going on that first down play. Brings up another second and long. And here on second down, you just want to make it to a manageable third down. You don't really want to take a shot downfield. You just want to get some of that yardage back that you could have got on first down. Um, try to make it a good third and six, third and seven. To give yourself a shot, get a first down, and put one in the end zone on this drive. You look at Wyke here. He is way out of the picture. Going to be a fake, going to be a bootleg this him. time. He's got Brendan Wyke. He's going to make the catch. Good job by Brendan. And like Jared wanted, he wanted a third and manageable. It's a gain of six, bring up third down and six. And out of that formation, you can do so much. Um, when you got that up back and then the running back behind you, and then you got number 12. Um, I mean, you could, you could have 12 just run to the right right there like we saw earlier to start the drive off. 
and just do it a little outside sweep with them and just have two lead blockers. But nice little play call there to bootleg out of it and find Wyke, make it a third and seven. Third down, trips to the left side, running back to the right. Got it's going to be a hard Got count, him. and we're going to get him. That's we something. Get a yeah, we lot we've, of guys. Yeah, we we've, we've been we've been doing good on that this year. I don't think every time we do a hard count, I don't I don't think we've jumped off sides one time. Knock on wood, but yeah, we're gonna um, do that Don Bagley does a, now. yeah Don Bagley does a pretty good job of selling that hard count and making you jump off sides. Now you got an easy third and one, and, and if you don't get it, you're probably going you're for it. Go for it, yeah. Third and one, same formation this time with the king to the right side. Three down linemen, four down linemen oh, for the midgets. The <laughs> Dom snapped the ball, and the ball never showed up in his hands. So that five yards that we just picked up on the offsides, we lost on the false start by everybody but the center. You ever hear those calls with the NFL? <laughs> <laughs> everybody else moved but the ball. Center is typically Brennan Jackson, but... He is out this week with an injury. So trips to the left side, running back to the right. Going to be a quick left throw for Vagley. It's going to be caught by Brennan Wyke one-handed. He's going to gain four, bring up a fourth and two. Catch by Brennan Wyke. Fourth and three officially, and I'm going for it, Jared. Yeah, I think so too. Um, something I want to see out of Wyke, though, is whenever he catches the ball, it feels like he tries, tries to go to the side just to try to get more yardage, but... Put your foot, Put in, the your foot in the ground. Get upfield. I mean, you, you caught the ball at the, I mean, probably a yard past the line of scrimmage. So if you're running straight out of bounds, might as well run forward and try to get those positive yards. That brings up fourth down, and looks like Coach Horner is going to keep that offense on the field. About a fourth and three, maybe four. I, I'll say three. Trips to the right side, running back to the right side. It's going to be a rollout with Vegley. He's got a guy in the corner, yes, and sir. it's going to be caught by the Eagles to the 10, to nice. the 5. Down inside the 5-yard line. Great call by the Eagles, and they pick up the first down temporarily as there is a penalty flag on the field, and it's going to be coming back. Looks like a holding call on the offense. Great catch there by Nick Janik as he was wide open on the corner route. What a ball, yeah, what a ball too on the run by Dom Vagley there. Hold against Columbia. With the holding penalty, a loss of 10 takes you out of <laughs> takes field you goal out of range, everything. Takes you out of everything. <laughs> we're going to be punting. Man. It's a little disappointing, but you have to be able to look at it and say, "Hey, we know we can run that play. We like what we see." So there is a positive to that. It just stinks so. You got the ball inside the five. Now you got the ball at the 50-yard line. Now you're forcing to kick the ball, hopefully, inside the five. It's 140 on the clock in the first quarter. Punt is off, and it's another booming punt. Great punt. Wait for the, the fair five? catch and He's caught sure. at the five. I think if you're Tucky or Murphy there, you want to let that one go and see what happens. But instead... He that calls for fair catch. On call. That kick had some backspin on it. That was going to be inside the one. Having a guy like Coach Kendall teach you those things, man, you become perfect at that. <laughs> <laughs> so Freeberg will take over once again. Was that two drives? Zero points for each team? Yeah. Pretty good defensive start. I, I mean, I guess you could say, but going back to that last drive, we had about three or four penalties that, that brought us back, so. See what we can do out here on this third drive on the defensive side of the ball. Doubles to the right side, run right up the middle. Once again, going to be chased down by there a couple different Eagles. Carter Hicks on the tackle. Mason Schnabel almost had him in the backfield. Good job there by Mason getting in the backfield in a hurry. That's the unfortunate thing there. Hicks gets the tackle, but Schnabel's the one that blew that thing up from the start. <laughs> Last week, that first quarter probably took, what, almost an hour. And now we're only got a minute left in this first quarter. Uh, we've had a couple change of possessions, turnover on downs, and a couple punts. Going to be doubles to the right side. Looks like it's going to be man out there. They're going to send a motion man. It's going to fake the motion. They're going to go up the middle. This time it's going to be brought down. Schnabel Schnabel. Carter Hicks, great job there by both of them. 
And Freeburg could run this to the end of the quarter if they choose. And like I said that last drive, they, they like running at Hicks and Schnabel. They like, they like what they see running at those two guys. Um, I think they got that left tackle was one of their uh, captains that we saw out on the field before the game. So they must like running that play right at him and see if they keep going at him here on this third and seven. I think this is a good move here, taking this to the quarter. You've got a third down and eight yeah, from the talk about six. it a little bit over there. This is a – you're going to have to uh, get a couple yards here. So, that's going to do it with the first quarter as the Mandy McGuire group scoreboard is tied 0-0 after one quarter. We're going to head to a, a break, and we will be back right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that 2022 marks the 50th year of Columbia Eagles football? On October 7th, we are inviting all past football players and coaches back to CHS to help us celebrate 50 years of football. We want to invite you, the past players and coaches, to attend the tailgate at the Perch, which is sponsored by the Columbia Quarterback Club. That starts at 6 p.m., so make sure you're down there at the Perch. Get your tailgating on. Big third down and seven from the seven. Quarterback's in a step back. Going to step into the pocket. He's going to gain Hicks. six. Like Logan Hicks that's over there. That's not enough, though, and that's going to bring up another fourth down for the midgets inside the 15. And Logan Hicks did a great job uh, breaking down pitter-patter in his feet. Because, I mean, if he makes that one if he makes that one guy miss, he's probably got a first down. He's probably picking up a little bit more. So great job by Logan Hicks to make that tackle there and hopefully force another punt and get the Eagles the ball back. This time a more obvious punting situation as Cole Stewart's going to go back into a normal punting spot as a fourth down and two from the 13. Gets the punt off a low line drive straight Ooh. out of bounds. That's what you love to see there. If you're the Eagles here, now you got good field positioning. You've ran Where are they gonna set a lot of different here, plays. Jared? Yeah, I don't know. Good for 20 yards, the Eagles offense is gonna take over at the 33. That official that time though, he, he didn't just pick a spot, he, he legitimately looked for where it was gonna go. Hey, and I'm not talking too much smack on the refs like I did last Ooh. week, so. <laughs> rough game last week. Yeah, they were the down first half. Official. They yeah. were down one. First half was rough though, man, I tell you what. Came out with a W though. So Eagles, good field position once again. Tight end left, sniffer back left. Another slow snap, but he gets back. It's going to be a gain of two. Whoa, whoa. Ball came out, but the He's umpire down. is calling him down on the play. One more thing about homecoming coming up on October 7th. We're going to recognize all past players and coaches on the field between the third and fourth quarter. We ask you to meet with about four minutes left in the third quarter on the track when we will get you out. So help everyone spread the word to past players uh, coaches, whoever it may be, we would like to get a good turnout. 50 years, the 1972 team, they're going to have about half a dozen guys here, so it would be cool to – Oh, we'll have to interview some of those guys. Have to get as many <laughs> as we can, yeah. Same formation for the Eagles, second and eight. Going to be a pass oh, played on him. the middle of the him. field, and it's going to be Wetzel who's oh, going to be open, but overthrow him by about three yards. <sighs> that had six written on it, but instead it's going to go incomplete, bring up a third and eight. And Coach Horner really trusts in uh, Dom, Dom Vega's arm must be feeling pretty good tonight. He came out on that first drive and threw all three times. And Dom vega has been slinging it around in this first quarter, or first half, I should say. So, um, 
Maybe they're maybe that's just a disguise for uh, him to go off <laughs> with his feet in the second half. Doubles tight for the Eagles. Good snap this time. Vagley's going to have to decide what to do, and he just throws it down. Pressured there by number 90, the defensive end. We mentioned him earlier, and Keenan Marsh, and it falls incomplete. Nothing going for the Eagles offense. And he's listed as 6'5", 230 on here. We were, you were talking about him in pregame. Saw him long legs out there, big guy playing DN that can just get in the way and forces Don Bagley to have another incompletion and the Eagles to have another fourth down. Freeberg's going to have to watch the football here. Fourth and eight at the 30-yard line. I could see a hard count potentially coming right here. Instead, it's going to be a punt. It's going to bounce at the 15 and a great bounce for the Eagles as it goes out of bounds at the 10. You just heard the Freebird coach, better than the five. <laughs> <laughs> so, good punt there. Now you got to get the defense to do something again, and you might have the defense scoring tonight for the Eagles. Yeah, I want to see a big hit, force a fumble, scoop and score. I don't something think, to get I don't, going. Yeah, we need, we need a little energy here. Um, so we'll see if this defense can finally get something going, get a little energy in, in this place. Try to get some points on the board. Freeberg, like we said, taking their time getting their calls in. Usually we talk about the Eagles doing that. Freeberg's doing it to us tonight. Eagles are still going to keep three down linemen. Kenningstein's going to be your nose guard. Four, five linebackers for the Eagles stepping up. Doubles to the wide side of the field. They're going to run it this way to us into the boundary. Going to be good for two. They're going to keep their feet moving. Going to be lost on the play, actually. Schnabel started that play, too. He playing that left left tackle. Flowed out to the ball. Just flowed with his guy. Was, I mean, his lineman was basically taking him to the ball. And that running back tried to cut back up, and Schnabel was standing right there. Kind of slowed him down. Didn't get the tackle, but slowed him down enough for his other Eagles to come in and finish the playoff. Hicks got credit with the tackle. He's that right tackle, so he come across the field, across the play to make the tackle. Motion man this time, number 27, a slow snap back to him, but that's all right. He's going to be caught by Schnabel. Gain of one. Great job by Mason. Ball goes away. Your man goes away. Stay there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Kaning Stein came out. Is that Antonis in? Nope, Joe Kish, Kish in now. Playing those. Big third down here again, and Freeberg hasn't had very good field positioning tonight. Um, probably got three different drives of having third down and goal line right behind them, so big play here. Columbia brings pressure this time. Quarterback steps up. He's got a man down the middle of the field, and it's going to be caught. Big gain there for Freeberg, caught by number nine, A.J. Banks. He got to the inside of Wetzel in the big first play of the game for either team. Takes the ball good for 34 yards, and Freeberg gets a little bit of breathing room now. And that might, that might be the first time we've seen Wetzel get get beat like that this year. Look at him; he's playing 10 yards off here. He was in this. He was in that right spot too. He tried swiping at the ball, but Banks just went up and got it before Wetzel could go up for it. They're gonna hand the ball Force off. It in, it's Brennan. gonna come in. Good job, Brennan, getting in. This time it's going to be brought down number five for the Eagles and number 57 gets the tackle. Loftus with the carry. Maddox, Stefan, and Schnabel getting the tackle. And that was all set up by Brennan Wyke at this outside linebacker spot, forcing it back inside. You had two blockers coming right at him, and he takes the hit, forces that runner back inside, and having two more Eagles come off make a tackle. 8.45 remaining in the first half. Going to be a rollout to the left side. There, Great get job there, by Carter. Hicks getting back there. Misses the tackle, forces it out wide. Going to be brought down by Janik, but Carter just about got himself a sack. I keep calling Janik. I keep screwing that up. It's <laughs> Logan Hicks. Number 54 tonight is Logan Hicks. Say it again so you remember. Yeah, maybe I should just <laughs> say number 54 so everyone else knows that it's Hicks. Another third down here, Alex. Third and ten. I'm bringing pressure. Yeah, I think I am too. I think I'm. I think I'm bringing number twelve on a blitz here. I, I think last last week he kind of finished the game off with a blitz play that forced Roxanna to not score any points. So 
I'm, I want to see number 12 make a play here, but he's going to stay in coverage. They're going to go up the middle this time, and it's going to be brought down. Gain of five. Makes a tackle, though. Gets the tackle as he trips the man up. And you look down on this play, or on that play there, A.J. Yeah, Banks was the wide receiver down here. And we had Maddox Steffen out. He was going to be guarding him underneath, and uh, Wetzel was going to be over the top of him. So Eagles weren't going to get beat by him on that play. Instead, it's a gain of six, fourth and four from Might the this Eagles' 49-yard line. Look like they're going to pin us deep. Do that one. He's only five yards off the ball. Just Seeing that quarterback back there, he could run it if he sees what he likes, but he's going to kick it away. Hopefully he gets an eagle bounce. It's going to bounce at the tw 21, sorry, and it's going to stay in bounds and be downed at the 13-yard line. So 7-13 remaining on that Mandy McGuire group scoreboard. Eagles and the Midgets still tied 0-0. Yeah, I already forgot how many punts there's already been, <laughs> at least four. More than I think we've had or seen all season. <laughs> so, Not much exciting stuff happened. The big 34-yard pass on third and 10 is about all that's happened tonight. Yeah, that's been the only big play. So, I mean, we'll take that. No big plays besides that Zach Wetzel getting beat across the middle. But that means it's our turn for a big play and see if we can get something going here and get inside the red zone. Eagles are going to run it to the outside of the field. Great job by Freeburg forcing it in. The inside vaguely might be a gain of one. Ran about 20 yards and only got one on the play. Second and nine, nothing going on that one. Yeah, and Freeberg did a great job there, just flowing to the football. You saw about five or six silver hats there um, following number 12. And, I mean, watching the first three weeks of Columbia film, I mean, whenever you're watching film, you, you know who to watch out for. So, um you know number 12 is probably going to get the have the ball in his hands most of the time. Doubles here this time, looking to the left side the whole time. Good He's going to have a good touch pass there. Going to be caught by Looks like Janik. number 11. There's Janik. Good for Columbia Eagles. First down. What a rocket that was, too. And Janik was kind of, I think he ran an out route there. He got pushed out whenever he was going up to make the catch. And luckily enough. Puts, gets one foot down, high school rules. Good enough for Eagles first down. Keep this drive going. Gives the Eagles a little breathing room, too. They got the ball at the 25 now, 6.30 remaining. Going to be a handoff this time to Wyke to the right side of the field. He's going to get a loss of one. Look at Schnabel. He's three yards in the backfield there. Wasn't able to cut it up like Jared wanted. Like you said, you almost got to look for a cutback play. Yeah. Nothing's in front Especially of Especially on that outside zone. I mean, yeah, you want to you want to get to the outside and try, probably get to maybe between the hash and the numbers. But um, I mean, once you run past those numbers, there's not a lot there's not a lot of places you could go. So it's nice whenever you can get upfield earlier and just get two to three yards instead of losing one. Eagles are going to have doubles to the wide side of the field. Sniffer back. With the pistol back. They're going to run it up the middle this time. Haven't ran it up the middle yet. Going like to be that. good for about six and bring up a third and five, which we talked about earlier being a key. You want to have these situations that you're manageable and you have a full playbook now. Tackled by Tucker Murphy. And I'd almost go trips to the boundary. I'd put trips to the right side of the field and have – have three guys follow all those guys on the outside and put Don Vey just give the ball to Don Vey coming this way, let him do his thing um, with this big field that they got over here. So um, Coach Horner going to call timeout and discuss it. Big play in this game. Once again, Blue Jay night here for the Eagles. The Junior Eagles cheerleaders got out with their performance here early tonight. 184 kids came out and did the camp, and then Blue Jays with their record-setting numbers Came out and led the Eagles through the tunnel. So we'd like to thank all those volunteers at the Blue Jays once again. Thank our sponsors. Couldn't do any of this without you. At Mandy McGuire Group scoreboard still reads 0-0. So got to get something going for the Eagles here now as Coach Horner, Coach Kendall was out there, Coach G's just now. He's coming in and out. <laughs> Coach Amson, he's still looking at the, uh, the iPad down there. So another beautiful night here of Cokia Conference football. Football weather is finally here. Big shout out to Coach G. Just turned 50 this week. Big 5-0. Big 
getting up there, man. <laughs> getting more and more gray hairs. <laughs> so big third down for the Eagles. Third and five from the 30. The Eagles will receive after our Century 21 halftime show. So yeah, th this could that's be, a big end thing up being there. a big drive here if we can waste some more clock, punch one in the end zone, and give Freeburg maybe a minute left for halftime. But yeah, like you said, Alex, that would be that would be real nice. Looks like man to man, they're going to keep it inside with Vegley. He's going to run oh, to the I'll right side. That. He's got a first down. He's to the 50. He goes out of bounds, and that's good for Columbia Eagles. First down. He did the total opposite. He put trips left, and he ran to the boundary. <laughs> Pretty simple play call there. Once you send that motion man out here, like you said earlier, you hope it takes that safety, and that's what it did. Safety or linebacker. Yeah, it takes him out of the whole play, basically, because then that's another guy that Don Vega can just check off his list and say, okay, I don't have to worry about that guy anymore because I know I'm running to the right side. And he just follows my uh, motion guy all the way out to the left. So great play call there by Coach Horner and the Eagles. King to the right side, into the boundary. Snap, going to be a quick handoff this time to Wyke. Oh. He gets upfield. He's yep. got himself five yards, keeps his feet moving, play. lowers the shoulder and gets seven. Good positive run there for Brennan Wyke. And Vagley does a great job of faking out that run after he hands it off because he, he's hit number 60 on that far side. I think it is 60 or 80. I can't really tell. Might be 90. But he, I mean, he, he went after Dom because he thought he still had the ball. So great job by Dom Vagley to sell that fake and, because one of these times he's going to pull that, and if, if 90's not there, he's taking that to the house. Second and three this time. We'll call it, yeah, we'll call it second and three. Four down linemen, four linebackers for the midgets. It's going to be a pass play. He's looking to Wetzel. He's going to throw it down to the left side of the field, and it's going to be caught by Wetzel. He's to the five, gets tackled at the three. First down for the Eagles. What a beautiful ball from Don Bagley there. Perfect touch on it. You got it where only Wetzel could grab it. And great, great haul by uh, Zach Wetzel. Couldn't quite get in the end zone, but puts it inside the five yard line. And now if you're Coach Horner, I'm taking a little bit more time off this clock before I'm trying to score some points here. But I mean, there's no points scored yet. So maybe you just try to score whenever. Gonna be the same formation for the Eagles. They got everyone on the left side for the midgets. Vagley's gonna keep it. He's going to get tackled. No, he's not. He's going to keep his feet oh moving. Oh, my goodness. He's going to have to make oh one more man my. miss. Good job blocking there. Lowers <laughs> the shoulder into the end zone for Columbia Eagles. Touchdown. Oh, my gosh. That was a Madden play right there, man. <laughs> Great job keeping your feet moving, keeping the play alive, and getting into the end zone. And I'm usually on the defensive side when that happens in Madden. <laughs> you can't tackle in that game anymore. Wow, what a what a play there by Don Vegley to just use his ath athleticism and get out of that tackle and go <laughs> run all the way probably 30 yards cross field just to get that out of the other pylon and then run somebody over. Good snap, good hold kick is up, and it is good. Had a little issues with those PATs and field goals the last couple of weeks, but that's not the case this time. We take a 7-0 lead with 4-0-1 remaining on that Mandy McGuire group scoreboard. We're going to head to a break, and we will bring you the rest of the first half right after this. Vaguely gets the credit for the touchdown there, but whoever the wide receiver was on that far side, we couldn't get a number to stalk block, and the play is going away from him the whole time. And uh, he stayed with his block, though, and that's that shows there whenever you uh, you don't take a play off. Don Vaguely is going to kick the ball off here. 
It's going to be caught at the 10. They're going to do this fake reverse again. 43 is going to take it to the left side of the field. And Columbia Eagles are all over it. You know, Coach Kendall was probably all over that film right whenever uh, it was probably Sunday or Monday and telling his guys, watch out for this reverse because they'll fake it. But at one of these points, they'll probably give that ball off, and you got to be awake for that. It's a great job by the kickoff team there to bring Logan, up first down. Logan Hicks gets credit with the tackle there with Brennan Wyke, and really a lot of going on for that kickoff, but no, go, no gain out of it. So it's going to be first and 10, Freeburg from the 17-yard line. Columbia would love to keep them out of the end zone here. Going to be a run right up the middle, and they got a big hole, lowers the boom twice there. Runs over the first would-be tackler. I think that's number 27, Caleb Loftus. Yeah, he just laid the boom on him, whoever that was. My gosh. Good for eight yards. Clock is the friend of the Eagles. Freeburg has called one timeout. Doubles to the right side, sniffer back left, running back left. Second down and three, 320 remaining in the ball. First half, rather. Low snap, slow snap. Going to be picked up, caught, no, dropped. Snaps are taking a little while to get back to Stewart. Good job there by Stefan on the defense. I got a text that said that was uh, Zach Wetzel on that block, on that touchdown. So he makes the big catch on, I think it was third down, and then makes the big block for Don Bagley on first down, get him in the end zone. Put the Eagles up 7 nothing here with the three minutes left and 17 seconds in this first half. See if Eagles can get a stop. Go up the middle this time is Freeburg. They're going to have enough for a first down, which is going to take away my thought that I was going to have. And it'll be a new fresh set of downs for Freeburg. I was going to say if they get a stop here, are you burning a timeout? And uh, oh, yeah, forcing a punt. I would, I would have definitely because, yeah, you're forcing a punt and then you can get one more on the board. But first down, time's going to keep ticking. And now Freeburg's thinking, let's take some time off the mm -hmm, clock. Not get the Eagles the ball back for the end of this half. Doubles to the right side, sniffer back right, motions over to the left side with his running back. They, Ooh, now that's a penalty. Yeah, they have two too guys many guys motion. moving. False start on the midgets. So that's mm. going to be a loss of five. And you look during that play on that motion, you had the running back and the sniffer back both go in motion. And they both look at the quarterback like, oh, wait, which one are you sending? <laughs> Could not do that in football. First down. First and 15 now. 2.24 and counting in the first half. Doubles to the right side. Ten seconds on the play clock. Running back left. Sniffer back left. Hicks is moving to the inside. Wyke's going to come. They're going to send motion men, and it's going to be a pass. They're going to have to throw it, and it's going to be about five yards short. Good job on the defense Incomplete by number 13, I believe it is, for the Eagles. Quarterback tried to throw it, but he was a couple of yards short. Peyton Andrews, the corner over there. Second and 15, 206. Are you thinking about timeouts again now, Jared? Um, Yeah, if you get a stop here on second down, you start thinking about it. Rolling out to the right side. Quarterback's got to throw across his body again. It's going to be caught, Wetzel. and it's going to be inbounds still. The official said he got tackled inbounds. Loss of one on the play, 155. You see Coach Horner's moving up towards the coaches. We saw Coach Jermaine there put his hand down, telling him to calm down. Get one more stop here, and you're and able they, to and, save one. And then, yeah, out. you can, because we've already burned one of them. Quick play here by get Freeburg. There, Dom. Dom's going to get to the backfield, and he's going to make a loss on the play. Shot out like Time a out by the Eagles at 133. Time out for the Eagles. Got the clock shut down at 131. We'll see if they're going to put two seconds on. I'm going for a block here now, Jared. Yeah, and Don Bailey on that play shot out like a cannon. I think he's was playing safety, but he moved up to the middle linebacker for that next last play, and he was definitely blitzing there. And blitzed perfectly. I mean, all they ran was a simple halfback toss to the left, and 
Vega, he was there to finish it off. Now you have fourth down with 130 left. I mean, yeah, you can either block it here or, I mean, even if you don't, you get the ball, I'd say, at 40 or the 50. I mean, you have three, four plays to just get in field goal range and still get some points out of it. When we talked to uh, Coach Jermaine in the Holton Meets Coaches Corner, which you can listen to on Spotify, Inside the Nest, uh, we talked to him, and he said on that last drive against Roxanna, Vegley came up to him and said, hey, Coach, on the blitz, yeah. I, I got something figured out here. <laughs> and we even said, we said, man, it seems like he's got that cadence figured out. Well, yeah. he blew him up on that last uh, possession there when the Eagles needed to force a three and out, and they did. And Coach Jermaine trusts him, and I know Coach Horner does too, um, putting him back there at quarterback. And then, I mean, he just see, he sees the field so well, and he finds openings that not a lot of other kids can. Um, so it's it was it was nice last week to see him make that big play and get and us a win. Another low bad punt, and that's yes, exactly sir. what the Eagles needed. Exactly what the Eagles needed, and the ball goes straight out of bounds, and it's going to be at the 35, 34 yard line. And that's exactly what the Eagles needed. One twenty nine, one timeout remaining. It only took two seconds. Man, you know you have a big leg in your kicker for a, peak or a field goal. We'd rather have seven. We're going to have a pistol back this time. I believe that's Cameron Janik. Tight end and sniffer back to the right. They're going to hand the ball off to Janik. He's going up the middle. Yes, he's sir. got a hole. A he's got 10 yards, and he's down to the 20. Good first play there for the Eagles. <laughs> did you just call him Cam Bam Janik? I think he did. <laughs> Janik gets 12 yards. He gets to take a breather. And comes White now at running back. Going to be two Vegley's left and set up in doubles, it looks like. Rainwater out here, wide receiver closest to us. Doubles for the Eagles. Sending the motion man is Bryant. They're going to fake the handoff. Going to be a pass play to the corner. He's got Wyke. He's got the 10, the 5, end zone, touchdown, Eagles. Beautiful play call. Wonderful. I like that. I think we ran that last week whenever we – Don Bagley fakes it to his running back, rolls out to that side. Everybody on the defense thinks the ball's going to the right. And then you have Brandon White sneaking out of the backfield and Don Bagley just throwing a little loft pass over to him and getting six. Eagles up, 13-0, PAT pending. Looked at Coach Horner there whenever that play was over. I instantly looked down at him. He was excited on that call. <laughs> And a guy that doesn't show too much emotion. Good snap, good hold, kick is up. Right down Broadway, and that is good. So that takes the score, Columbia 14, Freeburg nothing, 59 seconds remaining in the first half. Yeah, that's a Great big, job. big, big possession there. Coach Horner's fired up right now, as are the rest of the Eagles. First half isn't over, though, so the Eagles are going to have to uh, get one more stop. They get the ball coming out, and that's the biggest thing, I think, mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, just getting six points up there, and especially in that first quarter. I mean, no one could really get anything going. Um, so them having two bad punts gives us basically 14 points, good field position. So, um, yeah, two good two good scores there to go in before halftime, um, plus getting ball at half. So don't don't let them score here, and you're going up two scores at half. Coach Kendall said in one of the early Holt Meets Coach's Corners, he said, you know, special teams only get maybe 5% of the snaps in a game, but they could make up 98% of the game. Yeah, um, that, obviously uh, last weekend. Yeah. And then, like you just said, two bad punts led to two scores. So and they've, a true statement. Freeburg's punted the ball probably four or five times already tonight. So, um, I mean, special teams has been on the field tonight more than you really expect. But done a good job. I mean, just getting good field positioning and punching those scores in. See if we can get a stop here and go into halftime. New to the week is the music between uh, plays, I guess you'd call it, between series and drives. Possessions. There you go. That's a great word. <laughs> so Vegley's going to tee it up. He's going to kick towards the wilderness. 59 seconds remaining before that Century 21 halftime show. It's going to be caught 
at the seven, nearly had his knee down on the ground, was the return man. He's going to get to the 25, get stood up, and going to be called down at the 25. And I think if you're Freeberg, you just want to go into halftime now at 14 and don't do anything stupid here. Yeah, unless you like what you see. Like earlier, they liked what they saw with uh, Wetzel Garden number nine on this side. But, um, yeah, I think I'm with you. I think you just take the knee and go into half. You don't want to force a pick six because um, you got Don Bagley, number 12, obviously playing center field. Um, so your quarterback's got to be smart here and not force a pick to even get us back in field goal range because, I mean, if you throw one down the middle of the field right now, you're giving us the ball at almost the midfield. So you look at all of be our, smart. You look at all of our center fielders, Wyke, Vagley, Wetzel, they can all catch the football, and it's just going to be a quick little route to Murphy. He's going to make one man miss, and it's going to be brought down for a gain of five. And maybe that's Stefan on the tackle. Peyton Andrews, number 13, not number 15, number 13 on the tackle. So they're not going to have to run a play. It looks like they're going to, though, second and six. Force fumble here. Going to roll out to the right side. Quarterback's just going to have to keep it and tuck it. He's going to gain two, go out of bounds. Third down and three, and if I get a stop again, you got one timeout left. Call it. Yeah, 14 seconds left. I mean, you would think they're just going to take a knee or chuck it downfield for one last play, but see what Freeburg tends to do here. And Third and four this time. Doubles. Quarterback's just going to be in the pocket. He's going to roll to the left side now. he got to watch. He Don't could tuck nine. it. He is going to tuck it and run. He's going to get a first down, get out of bounds. Good for about eight and get up to the 37-yard line with six seconds remaining. Most likely your last play here if you're going to throw the ball downfield. First and ten now for Freeburg. This is where the Eagles are playing that prevent defense, but keep everything in front of you. Trips to the right side, to the wide side of the field. Three down linemen for the Eagles. Hicks just wants to go right up the middle. He's going to be stopped. They're going to send the house, though. Going to make one man miss. And it's going to be a gain of nothing. And that's going to do it for the first half of this Cahokia Conference matchup. A slow start in that first quarter, but it's all Eagles in the second quarter as Eagles take a 14-0 lead into the Century 21 halftime show. We're going to run to a break. We will bring you the band's performance, have another break, and then we will be back with the second half right after this.
marching band and color guard parents, remember to pick up your yard signs and either one of the concession stands. Welcome back to the Century 21 Halftime Show, presented by Century 21 here in town. Three minutes to go in this halftime once they get that time added back. And Jared, like we said, going into the Century 21 Halftime Show, not a great first quarter, great first, or second quarter though. Yeah, that first quarter, it wasn't sloppy, I would say. We, no team could just really get anything going. I mean, you would, we would have... Well, the first drive, we came out and we threw the ball three times, and then we had to punt it away like in ten seconds, I think you said. Um, but I mean, I think they just had to feel each, feel each other out a little bit, because then Freeberg started to run the ball uh, a little bit better, and then they had that big play uh, over on this right side, uh, number nine over Zach Wetzel. Um, but then number twelve happened, and then just started making plays with his feet, getting first downs. Um, that great pass that he had to Zach Wetzel down the left sideline to punch one in. And then defense sticking sticking up um, a zero on the goose uh, on the goose on the scoreboard. Um, it's pretty nice to see uh, during the first first half. And you look at you know number twelve makes it happen, but number twenty three Brennan White he's had a couple key catches that balls may not be in front of him, may not be where you want them, but he still makes an acrobatic catch and he makes the catch. He's running hard. You look on the defensive side of the ball. We've called Schnabel, we've called Stefan, we've called Hicks, we've called Janik, we've pretty much named everybody 
Um, both Hicks boys, I guess I should say. And both Vagways we've named in yeah. our defense. So good, a good, good half or All good around. quarter, yeah. Yeah. So the Eagles are off the field now getting ready. They will be receiving still a minute to go as Freeburg is uh, wrapping up their stretches here. Once again, thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to Summit Signs. Like I said earlier, I talked about all the signs and I never name dropped. That's <laughs> Summit Signs and the Herdlicka family here in town. They, uh, The quarterback club went to them and said, hey, our signs are cool, but they could be better. And Summit Signs says, you're absolutely right. We've been wanting to do something, so let's do it. So they did a great job. Their signs leading into the stadium from both directions. Uh, the quarterback club, they've got their tent set up. Once again, October 7th is that homecoming game, and the quarterback club will have hors d'oeuvres and uh, soft drinks over at the Perch, which is where all the other parents hang out the other nine weeks of the year. So make sure you're here. About 6 o'clock we'll get that underway, maybe even a little earlier, 5.30, somewhere in that area, and get everything going. We will be honoring the... 50 years of football in between the third and fourth quarter. They've got some homecoming stuff they got to do in between the first and second and at halftime. So we will be doing it at the third and fourth. Tonight, Blue Jay night, the junior Eagle cheerleaders come out, did their pregame show, and now the uh, Blue Jay players took the Eagles out through the tunnel. So thank you to all the volunteers with the uh, Blue Jays and all they do. As the uh, junior cheerleaders, 184 members came to camp this year, and numbers are through the roof with the Blue Jays. So, good, bright future ahead of us. So, the first time we will see the Freeburg kicker, number 14, J.J. Weiss, 6'3", 215, big kid. He is the sniffer back on the offensive side of the football and the kicker here tonight. Deep for the Eagles, Vaguely and Wetzel. That'll do it for the Century 21 halftime show as Vaguely catches it at the five. He's going to keep that left side. He's just going straight ahead, makes one man miss, tries to get around a second, spins around, and he's going to get tackled at the 26 for a gain of 21. You could really make a statement right now if you get in the end zone, if you're a coach Horner in the Eagles offense. Yeah, go up three scores right now early. Uh, I mean, I, I'd come out, I'd throw on first down. Um, we'll see what Coach Horner has in mind and if he wants to waste some, some time off that clock and go punch one in or if he wants to score early. Doubles to the up. left side. Sniffer back left. Motion man to the right side. Going to be vaguely. 20. Oh my Cuts back to the inside. 10-5. Touchdown, Eagles. He's pretty good at football. Once again, Vaguely <laughs> gets the the touchdown. Great blocking downfield by Carter Hicks getting through the hole. And great job by Dalton Rainwater. Stalk blocking down here closest to us. Dom Vaguely, 75 yards, 19 seconds. And now you ask him to kick a field goal and his <laughs> legs are probably burning. Jared wanted the Eagles to sling it around. I like keeping it on the ground. <laughs> Good snap, good hold. It is up and it is good. So, 19 seconds into the third quarter, the Eagles lead it 21 nothing. And uh, talk about making a statement. <laughs> yeah, you said that yourself. Now the one thing I will say though, when you watch Bryant when he's in that motion, it looks like he kind of step, steps up a little bit. Before you gotta make sure, yeah. yeah. Before the ball snap, that could be a false start, but. Make sure you're not moving forward. You can go left and right as far as you want, but Dom looks gassed there as he's kind of just walking back. Good buddies there in Dom Vagley and Brennan Wyke, both part of the uh, third-place team with the baseball team this past spring. So now you need the defense to come out and do the same thing. Keep that goose egg up there. We, I want to see a defensive score tonight. Yeah, scoop and score or pick six. How about they, a big man Big man touchdown? Joe Kish. We haven't somebody, had that yeah, yet. Yeah, a big man pick it up and score. 
We had that. That's how the Eagles started their season yep. last year. Owen Brewer. It was good for like 45 or <laughs> yeah, 55 yards, something like that. That was a good one to get going. I don't think we scored too much after that that <laughs> game, but you know what? It was good while it lasted. Yep. That was that Mascuda game where the Eagles lost. I think it was 49-26 or something like that. So, Vaguely catches his breath. Walks off to do the kickoff. Two men deep. They've been faking a reverse so far tonight. We'll see if they fake it or if they do reverse it. Vaguely kicks it a little short. Bounces at the 14. Skips off the turf. Going to be recovered. Going right up the middle, and it's going to be a missed tackle by Janik. But brought down by a flock of Eagles afterwards. We'll give the credit to Ben Scott and Mason Vaguely. So the Midgets will take over from the 30. With 11.33 remaining on that Mandy McGuire group scoreboard. See what the Eagles defense can do now. So Doubles to the left side, here. sniffer back right, running back right. Motion man's number 23, Murphy. They're going to go right up the middle, though. Not too much going as it's a swarm of Eagles this time making the tackle. Let's see who comes off the pile last. I believe that is Schnabel, is Schnabel and Maddox Steffen. Looks like Mason Vagley is playing this corner now, and Steffen's. Or that's Andrews. Andrews there playing. That's kind of a in between linebacker. Comes comes up, plays linebacker, but he's also playing safety whenever there's doubles out here. Kind of an odd formation for that Eagles defense. Murphy, motion man again. Going to be the same play right up the middle. This time they're going to cut back. Going to get to the 40. Cam Janik there. Going to be close. I think they're going to give it to him. And they do. You look over, Wyke was just playing a corner. Wetzel's at a corner. Vegley's at a deep linebacker, shallow safety. A little bit of everywhere there for the Eagles. Not too often that you see your safeties just two yards behind your linebackers. Murphy once again, same play once again. Going to be a gain of one. Schnabel on the tackle. Who's number 54 tonight? <laughs> Hicks. Hicks. <laughs> he took himself out of that play that time. He kind of ran up. They ran underneath of him, and he just kind of took himself out. They still blocked him. They could have let him go, and he wouldn't have had anything to do with the play, though. Three down linemen. Far side of the field. Three linebackers. Looks like we might be blitzing out the top of the screen, and we do. Going to be a, just a slant and caught. Positive play, positive drive here for Freeburg. Number 14 on the catch, J.J. Weiss. Gets that into the Eagles territory at the 49-yard line now. Now you see White going out there playing corner on well, number nine on that top of your screen. You got Vaguely at the bottom of your screen here, so. Going to fake the run this time. It's going to be kept by Stewart. He's going to be met at the line of scrimmage boy, Brennan. by Brennan White, and it's going to be a loss on the play. Good job, Brennan White. Like you said, going out playing corner, you had Mason as a corner. Wetzel played a little bit deeper. It looks like they're going to have one guy over the top, one guy underneath. And if you watch how Mason sets up down here closest to you at the 50, he's giving inside leverage here, forcing the guy back into the inside of the field. Trips to the left side. High snap brought down, going up the middle. Almost a Tripped hold. up. Should be a hole. And a gain of one. That guy was holding Carter Hicks all day. Off his skin on the carry. Gain of one, third and ten. This is where the Eagles need their fans in the stands and the uh, blue Holding crew. offense. I called it, Alex. I didn't even see a flag on the play. Carter that's, why was, I, that's why I kept talking. I didn't Carter see was it. fighting back to get, like, he almost had the tackle. He could have got the ball carrier, but one of the linemen was holding on to his jersey. Couldn't quite get there. But so, good enough to, for the holding call. Spot foul, lost 10. Trips to the left side, running back to the left side. 
Shotgun snap going to be kept, Screen. and it's just going to be one of our plays out of our Hicks. playbooks. And it's going to be Hicks on the tackle for a gain of nothing. Look like a little Miami bubble screen right there. <laughs> Hopefully other teams aren't watching out when they hear Coach Horner say Miami. They know what's coming. I don't think they have the same play calls anymore. <laughs> no. Third down and 18 now. Ball at the Freeburg 43. Same formation. All sorts of defensive backs here for the Eagles. Hicks going to force the quarterback to scramble. Stewart is. He's going to get to the line of scrimmage. He's got boy, three Hicks. men He's right everywhere. in front of him. And it's going to be Logan Hicks with the tackle, gain of four. He's kind of been everywhere tonight, uh, blitzing a little bit, playing a little bit in coverage, and not really letting the quarterback go anywhere. I mean, quarterback really hasn't had one big play yet, knock on wood, but um, scramble there and really nowhere to go. He had two, Mason Vegley and Logan Hicks there um, to stop him before he can even get to the line, of, the original line of scrimmage. Good, Jer good job there by Hicks, forcing him to scramble. Once again, went a little high, though. Going to be a pass this play. They're going for it. It's a sieve as a bunch of guys right get down. to the backfield. We're going to make a tackle, and it's going to be fumbled. It's going to bounce around. Eagles and Midgets both fighting for it guess regardless. Who that? Guess who caused that, Alex Schlemmer? I'm going to go ahead and say uh, Logan Hicks. Yes, sir. Still don't see who recovered the fumble. Regardless, it's going to be... A turnover on downs. Logan Hicks with the fumble, forced fumble. Yeah, and I think those last two plays there, he had two great tackles on, on that one. He forced forced a fumble. Quarterback was just fighting for extra yards. Hicks got a good punch on the ball, and ball comes out. I uh, couldn't tell, like you said, who recovered it, but it didn't really matter because they didn't get two yard to gain. So Eagles take over up 21 nothing. 7-13 left here in this third quarter. Doubles to the left side, ball on the right, hash. Running back, left, sniffer back, Hicks to the right. Going to be a straight handoff by Bryant. He's going to have to make a couple guys miss. Nobody did much blocking on that play for the Eagles, and it's going to be a loss of one. <laughs> yeah, you saw him running out to the right and said, nope, nope. not going that way. <laughs> <laughs> there are three guys out there that are about 80 pounds heavier than me. So a loss of one, like I said, not – not good whenever you look at your def or your offensive linemen and three of them are standing there with nobody in front of them. <laughs> Bryant comes off with Janik. I always say three possessions is never enough, though. If you get that fourth possession, go up four possessions, that's always huge because three possessions, all it takes is one little mistake and they're right back in the game. So it would be nice for the Eagles to get on the board here again. Going to be caught this time by Wetzel. Haven't said his name too many times tonight, but he's got ten. Of the 11 needed in the third and one now for the Eagles. Just a quick little hitch right there. A five-yard route gets you 11 yards. And I, I think I'd bring that king set in right now that we had last or a couple drives ago. I think it was in the th uh, second quarter when we had Carter Hicks and I think it was Brennan White paving the way for Dom Vagley. But it looks like we are going to put Carter Hicks as our up back. So watch out for Don Vagley following him up uh, up in the hole to try to get a first down. There's the motion man. There goes Vagley. He's following Hicks. He's got a <laughs> bunch of blockers. Hand on the back. Ten yards. First down inside the 40-yard line now for the Eagles. Peterman gets the tackle that time. First down. I, lo I love putting Hicks back there in that up back position because I mean he could catch the ball in the backfield a little bit if he gets out in open space quick enough and then he's a great he's he's just a great blocker because he's so big nobody really wants to take that on coming full head of steam so now you're gonna have Hicks as a tight end Cameron Janik as an up back Brendan Wyke as a running back and Hudson Bryant as your running back you got all the beef on the right side for the Eagles and what do we do we go to the left we're following Janik we got a first down for Brennan Wyke, explain everything to the right, run to the left. Well, Horner's having a little fun on this drive, too. He's putting up a bunch of different formations out there and just getting his guys in open space. And great job by the runners to find the open lane and, and take it. Positive yardage almost every, every play this drive. So great play calls by Coach Horner. Good job to the O-line. Besides that outside zone that we saw earlier, he was almost back to line of scrimmage, but 
second and one here. See what Coach Horner's got drawn up on this play. 440 and counting now in the third quarter. Same formation. Send a motion man and Bryant. Got an option if we want to have the option play, but it's going to be vaguely. He's at the 15 where he's going to be chased out of bounds. Good for another Columbia Eagles first down. And Bryant didn't make that whole block, but he got in the way for just enough time for Vagley to kind of free up some space and get that first down. But as a running back, you got to hurry and get out in front of Dom if you're lead blocking for him. Um, you don't want, really want to trip him up or get in his way. So Bryant and Wyke come off. Couldn't see. I think that's Rainwater and Janik. And Janik coming on. Doubles into the boundary, five seconds on the play clock. Officials calling it off. Eagles are going to get it off. They're going to hand the ball off to Janik. He's going to run pretty hard, gain two, and made a little bit out of nothing. Janik on the carry for Columbia. Brought down by number 12, Jack Kerber. All right, now we got Janik coming off, Rainwater coming off. Wyke and Bryant coming on. Under four minutes now in the third quarter. Eagles keeping it to the ground. Not much of a sound coming from the Freeburg fans who are pretty much from the 10 to the end zone. The length of the field on the fence. High snap. Kind of a busted play from the start. Going to be a loss on the play. Almost looked like Vaguely didn't know if he wanted to give it off or not because he saw... Two or three linemen crashing down on, look like Janik. Well, it might have been Bryant, but he didn't really have enough time to react to really pull the ball away from the running back's belly. Still put it in there and loss of about three three yards. So third and 12, most likely going to throw it here. Trips to the left side. Doubles the left side, rather. It's going to be a bootleg to the right. We got... Couple guys in the end zone. It's going to be behind the would be receiver in Janik. Not much you can do right there. Best thing that happened was that ball fell incomplete. So now you're going to have the ball in the left hash on the 16 yard line. And Dom's be got good the from a 33 yard field goal. No, it's in the middle of the field. I thought the ball was on the hash. So Wetzel going to be on for the hold. 33-yard attempt for Vagley. Under 10 seconds on the play clock now. All starts with the snap. Little low, picked up by Wetzel. It gets off. And what do you know? Through the uprights, good for a 33-yard field goal for Dom Vagley. That takes the Mandy McGuire group scoreboard with two minutes 59 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Columbia 24, Freeburg 0. And not the touchdown that you wanted, but hey, we'll take those three points. Yeah, it's still a three-score game. Uh, you would have to force them to score three touchdowns and get three two-point conversions just to tie it. Um, but you never know. We're going to head to a break real quick as it looks like the officials are going to take their time getting the field flip. So we are gonna head to a break and we will be back with the remaining of the three, third quarter right after this. Welcome back, where the Eagles lead that Mandy McGuire group scoreboard 24-0 here in this Cahokia Conference matchup. Both teams coming in at 3-1. Freeburg lost last week to Central, so they are 0-1 in the conference. Columbia gets the big win over Roxana there, 
Vegley tees it up, sends it deep, and it's going to be returned from the nine. Columbia is going downfield. Very good job. Could have been a hold called, and it's going to be a penalty flag. And it's going to be finally brought down by Hicks and Janik at the 39. The but that holding penalty on Vagley, or with Vagley, I guess you'd say. I don't know how to say that. Is going to make a comeback. Somebody that we don't talk about enough, the Columbia Eagles cheerleaders. Coach Walters does a great job. The girls are doing all their push-ups after touchdowns. We haven't added them up this year like we usually do, so that's something that I'm going to have to be better at, Jared. But give it to the cheerleaders when you think of football. And cheerleaders come with you every week, so good job to the cheerleaders. Uh, getting the junior cheer going this week as well. Hold against Freeburg. Go back the ball up to their own 19-yard line. 66 push-ups for the night, I think. Look at that math on the spot. Unofficially. <laughs> three down linemen for the Eagles. Two linebackers. A little 3-2 look. Three safeties. I haven't seen this look out of Coach G, I don't think. Trips to the right side, running back left. Going to be a quick pass route to the big boy, and it's going to be brought down by Vagley. Big tackle there by Dom Vagley. J.J. Weiss with the catch. Second and two. <laughs> no comment on that one. That was a body slam. <laughs> Trips to the left side, running back left. Going to be a quick pass once again. Murphy's going to catch it, Attaboy, and it's going to be a missed tackle. Murph's going to have to make something happen as he runs out of bounds. Uh, Loss in the back, of probably. six. Penalty flag thrown. I saw that one. Yeah, block, block in the back against Hicks. I would, I would imagine that's the call. Because he was going to make that make that tackle, and the other receiver shoved him in the back. You pushing him back here on this one? Oh yeah. <laughs> Coach Jermaine just told Horner, "Calm down, I got this one." <laughs> Coach Horner, he always watched from 10, 20 yards back, so it's going to be a block in the back officially from the White Hat. Coach Jermaine says, "Let's push him back to 19. He's going to eat up some clock here." Was that a 15-yarder? Oh, hands to the face. 15-yard? 10-yard spot? I don't know. The Wibs watching in from Murray. We've got the Corys from Bloomington, the Schlemmers in Cuba, Missouri. Mrs. Harris, Fort Myers. Let us know where you're listening from. Shoot us a text, comment. Let us know. Make sure you like us on all of the social media. Doubles the left side. They're going to run it right up the middle. It's going to be blown up. I believe that's going to be Hicks. It is. Great job just standing his man up and finding the football. Make sure you listen to that Holton Meets Coach's Corner on Spotify. Search Inside the Nest. We talk football. Usually we have all the coaches on. This week was just Coach Horner and Coach Jermaine. Typically, we get Coach Kendall and Stump to talk about JV as well. Just saw McKendry Bearcat, Ronnie Hunsaker, run out there and get the T. I guess nobody ever went out there and got it. Going to be a pass play, and it's going to fall incomplete. Would-be receiver, I believe, is number 82, Landon Townley. So a fourth and 14 now for the Midgets. How about another punt return here, Alex? I think I would not kick it towards him. <laughs> Maybe that's what they've been trying tonight. And watch, this This one's going to end up right in his arms. So Vagley's not even going to make it to the 50. Gets it off this time, oh and it's going to go out of bounds. Howie Knapp had his shot. <laughs> As it falls through his hands, Coach Kendall giving him a little... A little trouble on the sideline. Howie had a chance at making the return, but he doesn't. That's someone we don't talk about enough, too. Howie that, no. man. Eagles are going to take over at the 37. With 139 left in this third quarter. See if the Eagles can punch one more, one more in here to make it a four-score game. Because like I said earlier, I mean, I'm never happy with a three-score game because all it takes is one fumble, return for a touchdown, and you got a two-possession game, and it's – you're in, you're in it. So um, this is a big drive here, I think, for the Eagles to kind of get in the end zone, go up 
30, hopefully, and run away with this one in the fourth quarter. Eagles got all the guys to the right side of the field. Last time they ran it to the left, they're going to do it again with Wyke. He's going to try to get behind some of his blockers, but he's going to be backed up. Might give him a yard, if anything. And it doesn't look like that official's moving. Yeah, we'll give him a half a yard. Big thing there, though, keeps the clock moving. 115 on the Mandy McGuire group scoreboard in the third quarter. Eagles are going to have one split out to the right side. Hicks, you're up back. Cameron Janik, your pistol running back. Doubles to the left side. Janik and Wetzel. They're going to run it right up the middle. Good Cut job up. by Antonis getting a good block there. Oh and a good run. Going to be close to a first down. And Janik on the for Might even have it. We'll see where they spot it. Clock keeps moving, and it'll be good for Columbia. First Good for down. Columbia Eagles. First down. That looks like that. We'll bring up another Columbia Eagles. First down. And that clock's still ticking, so you probably got one play left here in this third quarter before you go into the fourth quarter. Same formation. Going to be a hard count. Don't get anybody to jump. Seven seconds on the play clock. Going to have to hurry up here if you are vaguely. Gets it off at the last second. Oh, They're going to go up, up the middle. And nothing going. As soon as Cameron Janik took the football, Dan he got Dan hit. Off, by number 60, Trent Little. Not the play you want to end the third quarter, but that's all right. The Eagles got a lead at 24 to nothing. And I just noticed they fixed that horn. Sounds better than the first two weeks. So that takes that Mandy McGuire group that's scoreboard. 20, well, 24 to well, nothing after three quarters. We're going to head to a break, and we will be back with the fourth quarter after this. Welcome back to the fourth quarter here at the Columbia Multipurpose Field. We are joined by cheerleading coach Robbie Walters. Robbie, we never talk about you all, but you're when you look at Columbia football, you got to think of Columbia cheerleading too. You talked tonight, you had 184 girls come out into your camp this week. So after this play, you're going to have to explain your season, your camp, and how everything's going. Okay. Vaguely sends a motion man, going to be a pass play, play action. They're throwing it to the left side of the field, and it's going to fall incomplete. Wyke was the nearest receiver, but it falls incomplete. So, 184 girls, correct? Right. Biggest one ever? Yes. Yeah. How was that? It's got to be fun, right? Uh, pretty insane. No, no, it's a great day. The kids look forward to it all year. Uh, we hear about it all year. Um, a lot of the cheerleaders that we have this year actually participated when they were much younger, so it's kind of full circle moment for them, so pretty cool. And it's got to be cool. Jared always talks when we have Blue Jay night that how cool it was, so those girls kind of, it makes it hit home a little bit more for them too, huh? Oh, yeah, I'm glad they coordinated it so uh, everybody could be up here all at once. So. That's, that's awesome. So 
on this fourth and 13. Vaguely's going to be a pass play. He's going to fall incomplete. Had Wetzel just about a yard behind him. So you look at your season here, you typically, all your competitions and everything are wintertime. Right. So you got to work all summer to get ready for the fall, right. but you also have to get ready for the wintertime too. Right, yeah. Uh, we're, I, I consider us a three-season sport, um, even though competitively it's just one season. So, yeah, we start in, they try out in May, work through the whole summer, three days a week, all the way to March. So it's a long year. Freeburg takes over here at their own 31, down 24 nothing. Going to be a pass play. Quarterback's going to find a man, and it's going to fall incomplete. We'll see if we can get a number. Number one, Cole Stewart was the intended receiver. The quarterback turned wide receiver. So whenever you come in and all summer, are you typically keeping everything the same? But, I mean, when you do competitions, you got to change it up every year. So what's your goal when you come in at the summer? How do you structure your practices to keep ready for all three seasons? Yeah, it's tough. Um, it's hard. Cheerleading is a continually evolving sport, so trying to keep on top of the trends and, you know, the, the skill level is, is difficult. A.J. Banks, the quarterback, once again, also a lefty. He's going to throw it down deep, trying to make something happen, and it's going to fall incomplete. Andrews on the defense nearly had the interception. So go on, you got to be yeah, keep changing. To, to compete those kind of elite level skills, you have to trust each other. So a lot of the summer is kind of building that trust, kind of seeing where our skill is and, and how these kids can work together. Are you going to trust somebody to throw you up in the air? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> I don't think I would either. So third down and 10 now for the Freeburg Midgets. Trips to the right side. They're going to look for a quick arrow route, and it's going to fall incomplete. I would assume number 14, J.J. Weiss, was the intended receiver. So you look at your history. Okay. You've got a great history, great track record, yeah. um, a lot of success. What do you key that to? Is it the, the stunts that you're doing? Is it the girls and all their enthusiasm? I remember – when I was in high school back in the day, that's when uh -huh. state champions were rolling through here. Oh, so right. okay, so yeah. what, do you, what do you credit it to? Um, I just think we have passionate coaches that love what we do, and we just want to see these kids succeed at the highest level. And, you know, when you can get them to buy in, you can do anything. So, Punt this time is going to give a great Eagles bounce. I don't know what the Columbia player was doing there, Cameron Janik. Got to let that one go, bud. Get away from that one. So the Eagles offense will take over here at the Freeburg 45-yard line. So your coaches, how many coaches are on your staff? Uh, I and brag on them for a right. little bit. <laughs> uh, an assistant coach, Marla Rose, and then Whitney Armington, who was a former cheerleader, and she cheered at Indiana University. Nice. Won a couple national cha championships with them. So it's, it's a nice good one to have. Yeah, it's yeah. a good one to have. Pretty good. So what's your schedule look like this year now? Um, competition schedule, uh, we, we're only allowed five outside of the IHSA State Series, so it's pretty short, but it's all kind of condensed into one month, really. Trips to the left side, going to be a quick bubble route, going to be caught. Going to try to make one man a miss as the defender got away from Wetzel. Nothing going there, going to be a loss on the play. And condensed, that's a great word to use there. Yeah, so, you know, trying to juggle school and basketball, cheering basketball games and competing all at the same time, it's, it's pretty intense. So you get to Bloomington is where the state tournament yeah, happens, correct? Goal, right. All right, so I'm going to ask, I'm going to let you think about this for a okay. second because I always put the coaches on the spot and say, right. give me your favorite memory of Bloomington after this play, all right? Okay. So Eagles are going to have doubles to the left side. Ball on the left hash, 10-15 remaining on the game. Motion man is Hicks. We're going to run to the right side, to the wide side of the field. Good block there by Hicks. Vaguely's going to have to cut up. Going to be brought down by three Freeburg Midget defenders. And I take it back to cheerleading coach Robbie Walters. Favorite okay. Bloomington memory. All right, highlight. Um, I would Things comes to mind is the our 2020 season. Uh, right before COVID, um, we just had a phenomenal group of kids who just worked so hard and, you know, we got out and struggled every competition and they nailed it in the state finals when it counted. So we ended up third, but it was the highest scoring routine we've ever put out and our, our daughter was on the team as well. So, you know, that was kind of, that was a, that was a big one. 
Eagles are going to have doubles to their high side of the field. Going to be a handoff with Janik. He's going to gain maybe five, bring up a fourth and eight, and I think the Eagles are going to be sending the punt team out. So scoring-wise, right. for the people that don't understand the scoring, like myself included, okay. you can kill your routine, do a great job on it, right? but you don't win. So how does the yeah. scoring happen? I know there's difficulty and all that, so elaborate yeah. on that. Yeah, I know they try to objectify the skills as much as you can, but ultimately you're – it is subjective, so you know you will get ranked kind of based on what they see. So you know you can do your best, and it may not fall in your favor, and sometimes it does. Yeah. So. You've never been disappointed in the judges, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we've had our moments, but it's the nature <laughs> of the beast. So oh, yeah. you just learn to live with it. Penalty flag on the play. See what the call is going to be. So what's your goals? What are you looking forward to this year? What's your routine looking like? Can you give us any insight oh, on that or not? we got a phenomenal group of kids. Uh, yeah, they're just, they just love cheering games, as you can see. Uh, they love working together, and uh, they got talent. They got the hard work. They got the magic. I mean, it's all there, so we'll see what happens. Now, you don't show off your, uh, your routine beforehand, correct? Is that right? No, we keep it under wraps for a while. You'll see us mainly do game stuff, but uh, behind closed doors, we're, they're killing it. So, well, Good deal. The offsides there on Freeburg brings up a fourth and one. Coach Horner sends the offense back onto the field. Trips to the left side, running back left. Send that into motion, man. Vagley's going to keep it. He fakes to the left side. He's going to get a first down. He's going to keep his feet moving, gets away from the tacklers. He gets out of more defenders. And he gets inside the 20. Good hard run there by Vagley. So final question, I'll let you get out of here, Coach okay. Walters. How many push-ups do you think the girls have done in a season? Do you keep track of it? I keep track during the games, but I've never okay. added them up all yeah, the way or through. We, they put them on T-shirts before in some of those seasons where, yeah, I think we've had games where they've done an over 500. <laughs> <laughs> Count me out. Right. I don't even know if I'm <laughs> Give me 500 jumping jacks. I don't know if I could do that in a game. Trips to the right side, bunch. Vaguely's going to let the play clock run pretty far down. They're going to fake the short route. They're going to go to the corner, and it's going to be tipped, I think, at the line of scrimmage, and it's going to go into the Freeburg hands for a pick at the goal line. He's got the 30, 40, got a lot of speed built up, and gets tackled at the 50. So, Coach Walters, thanks for coming up. We're going to try to get with you here in the uh, next coming weeks and uh, talk about your season if, okay. if you're into that. Of so yeah. we're going to flip the field around real quick. Thank you for coming up, and we'll get Jared back in here. Okay. Thank you. So Freeburg now with the big interception, good for 50 yards. I think it looked like Vagley's, Vagley's arm might have been tipped when he was making the throw. I still think you try to waste some more clock there and punch one more in the end zone. You're going home with a win, but not over yet. Not so fast, my friend. Stewart back now at quarterback and a big run. Freeburg really playing with some firepower now and Columbia a little bit on their heels. Makes me wonder now, the amount of times I've given Cole Stewart credit, I didn't realize A.J. Banks was coming in every once in a while, also a lefty, so. Sorry to A.J. Banks if you've been a quarterback a couple times and I haven't noticed. Freeburg going tempo now. Doubles to the right side. Running back left, sniffer back left. Three down linemen for the Eagles right up the middle once again. And it's going to be sniffed out and tackled. I believe Joe that's Kish. big Joe Kish. Number 27, Caleb Loftus on the carry. That's all you got to do is grab their ankles, Alex. Can't go anywhere when you grab their ankles. You cannot. <laughs> Hicks comes off. For the Eagles, same formation for the Midgets. Going to be a pass this time. They're looking to the right side. He's looking for Banks, who had the middle of the field. Now the quarterback's just going to have to try to make something ah, happen. Sir. Not going to be able to do it. Brought down for the sack. Is that Maddox Stephan? Maddox Stephan on the sack. I was wondering why he wasn't going after him a little earlier because he was kind of playing the flat there. And I don't think he was really guarding anybody behind him. They had all deep routes. Um, but great job there by Stefan to just flow with that quarterback. And whenever he wanted to turn up field, he was right there to make a play. Big third down here. 
Joe you know, Kish was wanting to get off the field. Kenningstein probably go for it. Was ready to get on. High snap, low or slow snap rather. Going to be a run this time by the quarterback. He's not going to have anything, and maybe a gain of one. Look like Logan Hicks again, and I bet he's got himself ten tackles tonight. And he's been all over the field, filling in for Brandon Jackson, and he's doing a great job doing it. Joe Kish comes off. So does Schnabel. Kenningstein comes on with Anthony Antonis, the sophomore. Really enjoy watching Anthony. He's a, a fast motor out there on the field. Pass play once again for the fourth and 12. Eagles are bringing everyone. Just gonna have to dump it off and they're gonna have to make a tackle now. Keep them in front of them. And it's a good job by the Eagles bringing down Caleb Loftus. And it's going to be, looks like Mason vaguely on the tackle. Looks a little shaken up. Mason, the sophomore. Playing defensive back. So it's a turnover on downs. It doesn't look like anybody knows what's going yeah, on Mason right didn't now. Know, for the <laughs> Mason didn't know he got the ball back. He was waiting to play the next play over there at cornerback position. Same way with Peyton Andrews. He's trying to stay out there for a wide receiver play. And Coach Horner recognizes that. <laughs> Just had guys a little bit everywhere. So Coach Horner's going to burn a timeout. 542 remaining on the Mandy McGuire group scoreboard. Like I said, Columbia a little bit on their heels there as we've gone on here. And like I, if I'm Coach Horner, I would, I would take this drive to just work on some extra other linemen that you want to put in. Um, yeah, you're up three scores, but work a couple new guys in there with, with the first team. Um, just, just to give them some reps uh, in, in primetime football. I mean, with only five minutes left in this game, um, you can travel down the field and give Freeberg the ball back with, I mean, under two minutes. So um, give, give some other guys in there and see what they can do. Once again, thank you to our sponsors. You see them rolling through the bottom of the screen all night. Uh, make sure they support us. Make sure we go support them without our sponsors. We couldn't do this. Thank you to the listeners for coming in week in and week out. Next week, I believe we are on the road at Salem, maybe? I think we have Salem at – oh, yeah. We're at, we do, we at home? I, think I we, don't know. We'll have to look at the schedule on that one. <laughs> I don't think we have a home game, though. I'll look that up. Yeah, I think our next home game is probably homecoming. Going to be a tight end with a sniffer back here for the Eagles. Going to be a handoff, though, to Janik right up the middle. He follows a couple guys at the hole, and he's going to gain. Late hit. Gain seven and going to be a late hit. Damn, Janik on the carry for Columbia. Logan Hicks gets absolutely blown up. Personal foul on number 66. And they were 15, yard, 15 yards away from the play where the ball was going. Probably just be called unnecessary roughness or unsportsmanlike conduct on this play. Should be an automatic first down, I, I believe. Yeah, it should be 15 yards, I believe. Personal foul against Freebird. Just really, a, a, I'm going to say a bad penalty right there. Like you said, you're 15 yards away. The play's over with at that mm -hmm. time, too. So, not what you're wanting there if you're Freebird. But it's going to be 15 yards for the Eagles, 535 now left in the ball game. Clock's ticking. Looks like Vagley's going to be taking his time here. Going to go up the middle. Another good run here for the Eagles. Gain of seven. Cam Janik really having a good two weeks here for the Eagles on the uh, offensive side of the football. Columbia is going to be next week looking up their schedule. We'll get this uh, officially out there. Columbia is going to be at Wood River next week. Second and four, under five minutes remaining now. Game slows down a little bit here. Four down linemen for the midgets. Three linebackers. Bagley's going to hand the ball off right up the middle. And it's going to try to be bent outside by Bryant. Going to be a loss of one. Forgot about Wood River there. So we're going to go at Wood River next week. They 
are at Central currently. Wood River is 4-0, and leading the conference with that 4-0. and Central is 3-1. and Third down and five for the Eagles, and they're going to make them jump. Offsides on the midgets. So next week will be an audio-only broadcast. We will not have the cameras. Not sure on the uh, the quality of the connections at visiting schools. So um, bear with us. <laughs> if you would, if you would see the production we have up here, you would understand our concerns. Mr. Nickerson and the uh, Columbia High School do a great job getting everything ready for us week in and week out. First and 10 here for the Eagles. Going to be a pistol back with the running back under 10 seconds now. Vagley's just going to let it run down as far as he can before snapping. Going to hand the ball off to Bryant. Good good patience there. Gain of four. Good job letting that blocker get in front of him. Yeah, and it's, it's pretty nice now uh, establishing Janik in the run game because now you have Bryant, Janik, and Wyke you can stick back there with Don Vagley. Um, and then you have Wetzel and uh, the other Janik on the outside, and then you have big Carter Hicks that can catch some balls every now and then. So this offense is starting to get established a little bit. Um, I know 12, everybody expects 12 to run the show, but um, it's nice whenever you have that supporting cast and that can help you out, out a little bit during a game. Fans filing towards the exits now. The game's slowing down. Going to be another handoff. Pull it to the right side this time is Bryant. Going to make it to the line of scrimmage and nothing farther. The, the officials blow it dead. Going to be a gain of nothing. Brings up a third and seven. And now you're under three minutes. Probably get this snap. If you don't get it, I would punt it away and give the ball back to them with about 20 or two minutes left in this ball game. Going to let it run down, I think, if you're Coach Horner here. You call one play. Or call a timeout and discuss this, try to get a first down and walk away with your win right now. Under five seconds now. Your back official starting to count it down. 220. It's going to be a handoff up the middle with Bryant. Going to be good for about three, and it looks like the punt Bryant team the is going to come on. Number 43, Tucker Murphy. Make sure once again we will be doing the Holton Meets Coaches Corner weekly, talking with the uh, coaches here at Columbia. Listen to that on Spotify. Make sure you like us on Facebook, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube page, KCHS. Share everything you can. Get the word out. Wykes deciding he wants to be an up back this time. Fourth and four, punt gets off a high punt. Haven't seen that yet tonight. It's going to bounce at the 20, get an eagle bounce inside the 10. Keeps on rolling. Let it go, boys, to the eight-yard line where it is downed. Teams are going to be looking at – colleges are going to be looking at him like, damn, he's a good kicker, man. Got kicker. He's got throw and run, and he does it all. Good win here for the Eagles once again. And I'm going to go with number 54, uh, Logan Hicks, Hicks yeah, is my player of the game tonight. tonight. Big night tonight from him. Uh, filling in for Brandon Jackson at that middle linebacker spot. Come up and made a lot of plays. And really, really big uh, in the run game tonight. So That's your player of the game, huh? That's mine. I might have to go to the same one with you. Is that the first unanimous? Loftus on the carry to the left side. He's going to be wrapped up. By Ben Scott, I think that is our first unanimous yeah, player of the game. We'll yeah, see if we can get him on the Holton Meets Coach's Corner. We've done so well tonight. We'll get that Mandy McGuire group scoreboard under a minute now. 24-0 Eagles lead this one. They're going to improve to 4-1. and one. one more victory gets them eligible for the playoffs. High snap brought down. Up the middle this time again, another slow developing play. Good for 12 and a first down for the Midgets. Eagles go to a four and one. They are eligible for the playoffs at five wins. You lock yourself in at six. So not that we're looking to week 10 yet, but hopefully it's on the horizon. 
And we're already almost, what, we're halfway through the season already. We are. Pass play this time for Freeburg. They're going to go verts around the middle of the field. Tried to snap up into a throw, but not able to, and it's going to be caught. Good for 15 and oh. slung down by Mason Valey, Vagley. Put another first down for That's Freeburg. Eight. To number 82, Landon Townley. Brought down by number 18, Mason Vagley. Cameron Janet comes off the field. Coach Horner wanting the defensive backs to play deeper. Probably good enough for one more play here. 15 seconds and counting now. Freeburg going to sling it again. They're trying to get the goose egg off the field. Columbia's trying to keep it on the field. Getting chased down now is the quarterback in a oh. crackback block, but they're not going to call it and going to be, yeah, be illegal. a gain of four. I ain't got out of bounds. Clock's going to stop. And the clock bounds. stops with two seconds now. <laughs> and this In will definitely game. be our last play. One more play to keep that goose egg. Bit of a statement win here. If you're Coach Horner, you're able to throw another goose egg up. Coach Jermaine, great job. I'm not going to say it yet. We still got two seconds <laughs> to go. Statement win, though, for the Eagles. Oh, if they score here, he'll be watching this play till four in the morning tonight. <laughs> Another pass play, and it's going to be caught by Freeburg and tackled at the 35. So what a win for the Eagles. Freeburg comes in, a big Cahokia Conference matchup. Coach G throws the shutout. Eagles win this one 24-0. We're going to head to a break, and we will bring you the post-game show, a quick wrap-up of the ball game here from the Columbia Multipurpose Field after this. Big win for the Eagles on that Mandy McGuire group scoreboard, 24-0. Huge statement win for Coach Horner, Coach Jermaine, and the rest of the staff. Uh, you come out firing, you know, like you said, it wasn't a great first quarter, did just enough to keep it tied, keep it close, and then you come out second quarter and you get the job done. Yeah, first quarter was kind of sloppy to watch, but not, like I said earlier, it wasn't really sloppy to watch. It was just two teams trying to feel each other out in that first half, and then uh, Columbia – didn't really let up any big plays, which what Coach Horner said in that pregame show. Uh, I think they had one big play, I, I would say. 34-yard pass. Yeah, right in the middle of the field over Zach Wetzel. I, th I think that's their only big play of the game that really mattered. Um, but then we had Dom Vagley, of course, uh, getting it done with his arm, that big pass down the sideline to Zach Wetzel, and then him punching it in. And then he had that touchdown pass to Brandon Wyke on the great play call from Coach Horner. And then you had that 75-yard run at the uh, start of the second half. So. Eagles are able to get it done. Offensive line, we never really said. Vaguely was really scrambling. They did a great job uh, protecting them, getting some holes for the run game. Defensive line, never really had any complaints about them again either. So another good victory for the Eagles as a team to improve to four and one. They go into East Alton next week. Haven't got a score from East Alton and Central, but um, that could be your conference championship again next week too. Mm -hmm. So all these games are always big. So we will be week five or week six rather at east alton once again that'll be an audio only not sure on the uh, wi-fi connections we know we can do audio though so with all that being said another good victory for the eagles with thanks to our sponsors reef schneiders for donating the meal tonight summit signs for the new signs the columbia quarterback club getting their 10 up for the perch tailgate and uh, once again, don't forget homecoming October 7th. The Columbia Quarterback Club will be hosting a party for the alumni. And that starts about 5.30, 6 o'clock over in the perch. For our statistician, Howie Knapp, Todd Klaskwin, Mr. Nickerson up here in the booth, Coach Horner, Coach Jermaine, Kendall, Stump, Amzen, Baker. I think that's all of them. I'm Alex Schlemmer and Jared Jermaine. 
What do you got to say about tonight's victory? Go Eagles, baby. Go Eagles. We'll see you all next week in the Holton Meets Coach's Corner and the Aces Wild pregame show at 6.30 on Friday night. See you then. <laughs>